Hello, cat lovers. It's the doc looking at one of this week's polarizing industry subjects, suppressor-induced back pressure. As we have a new generation of suppressor competitors, such as Huxworks and SIG offering what is now coined as flow-through or high-flow versus products from traditional manufacturers, we thought it was important to look at this subject objectively, to give a civilian user a different perspective from someone in the development game. At CAT, we consider ourselves unbiased on this matter purely because we create hybrids between the technologies. This is one of those subjects that we actually don't have a dog in the fight. We see the importance of both systems in differing applications. So let's look at this subject. Back pressure, in the context of firearms and particularly semi-automatic and automatic platforms like the AR-15, refers to the pressure that travels backward through the firearm system as a result of gases from the ignited gunpowder. This becomes the essential point to elaborate upon when discussing back pressure, especially in the context of suppressed firearms. When a firearm is discharged, the combustion of gunpowder in the round creates several byproducts, including carbon, unburnt, and partially burnt powder, and various other particulates and gases. Elevated back pressure, especially with suppressed firearms, can push more of these combustion byproducts back towards the shooter. While some back pressure is necessary for the functioning of gas-operated systems, like the one the AR-15 employs, excessive back pressure can lead to increased wear and tear on various components, including the bolt carrier group, gas rings, and the extractor. Over time, this can lead to parts failing prematurely. The AR-15, like many semi-automatic rifles, relies on a balance of pressures to function correctly. Too much gas can result in the bolt cycling too quickly leading to failures to extract. Excessive back pressure can increase the felt recoil of the firearm, which can be less comfortable for the shooter and may lead to slower follow-up shots. Additionally, increased back pressure can mean more carbon and other combustion byproducts being forced back into the action. This can lead to increased fouling and heat, which requires more frequent cleaning and can contribute to malfunctions if not addressed. Yet the most commonly mentioned issue by shooters is gas in the face a primary byproduct of increased back pressure. This can be uncomfortable and distracting. More importantly, not only is the overpressure of gas wearing on the parts of the firearm at an accelerated rate, but the toxicity of the ignited gunpowder byproducts is of major health concerns to shooters. Factors include lead exposure, as primers in many types of ammunition contain lead stiphnate. When the round is fired, fine lead particulate can become airborne. In conditions with high back pressure, the shooter may be exposed to more of these lead particulates. Chronic exposure to lead, even in small amounts, can lead to lead poisoning, which has a myriad of health concerns, including cognitive impairments. The combustion process in a firearm can release volatile organic compounds, VOCs. Prolonged or excessive exposure to VOCs can have health implications. The combustion from the round also releases carbon monoxide, a colorless, odorless gas that can be dangerous when inhaled in large quantities. The increased back pressure also causes more gas and particulates to be directed back into the shooter's face, leading to eye and respiratory irritation. As suppressor designs have advanced, an independent civilian lab such as Pew Science start to provide more civilian data, manufacturers have become more cognizant of elevated design theory. One of the design advancements receiving increased recognition is known as flow-through or high-flow. Unlike traditional suppressors that try to reduce the exit velocity of the gases, high-flow suppressors allow a greater volume of gas to exit more freely. This design choice comes with its set of pros and cons. From the advantages side, we typically see a result in lower additional back pressure, which can reduce the risk of gas-related malfunctions, especially in gas-operated firearms as well as less potential toxicity to the shooter. Due to their design, high-flow suppressors tend to cool quicker than their traditional counterparts. Lower operating temperatures can lead to a longer lifespan for the suppressor itself. Some semi-automatic firearms can experience increased bolt carrier speeds when using traditional suppressors, leading to increased wear and tear. High-flow suppressors can mitigate this effect, again preserving the longevity of the firearm. However, with every advantage becomes a list of potential disadvantages. The primary function of a suppressor is to reduce noise, and due to the nature of high-flow designs, they may not reduce noise as effectively as traditional suppressors. For covert operations or shooting in noise-sensitive environments, 
This can be a notable disadvantage. While traditional suppressors often effectively reduce muzzle flash, the high flow design can result in a more pronounced flash. This can be a concern in low light situations where a shooter's position might be revealed. In environments with loose debris or sandy terrains, the increased gas flow can kick up a pronounced dust signature, potentially revealing a shooter's position. The increased forward gas flow can result in more felt blast overpressure for the shooter and anyone nearby in the confined spaces of buildings where CQB is most prevalent. This overpressure in confined spaces affects the soft tissue of eye and nasal passages, as well as the human head, which over prolonged operations is harmful, uncomfortable, and disorienting. And finally, the nature of the gas-operated system will always require gas to cycle the system with an injection port near the shooter's face. Therefore, toxicity will always remain. It's the reduction in the increase over other factors that starts to be debated. High-flow suppressors represent an evolution in suppressor design, providing benefits primarily in the form of reduced back pressure and cooler operating temperatures. However, these advantages come at the potential cost of decreased noise suppression, increased visual signatures, overpressure in confined spaces, and still don't completely remove the toxicity in round combustion, just simply directing it away from the immediate user. CAT sees the importance of moving gas forward, from the immediate reduction of excess gas toxicity to the user, wear and tear and cooling timelines, but are these factors more important than potential overpressure, sound and visual signatures? Well, it depends on application. As with all equipment choices, it is essential to weigh the advantages against the disadvantages in the context of the intended application. Whether it's for a military operator engaging in sustained firefights or a civilian shooting enthusiast looking for a durable range tool, the choice of suppressors should be an informed one. For CAT, the focus for civilian users is all around suppressor innovation, not isolated attributes, as this is more of a factor in direct military development. A civilian user must be able to use a singular suppressor over a variety of applications, as the ownership process is drawn out and of a relatively high purchase cost, and in most instances comes with a for-life ownership. High flow is a vastly stronger concept in open environments, where small decibel increases are hard to ascertain and are selective to users, but becomes weaker in confined environments. Manufacturers can argue amongst themselves on their own competitive advantages, but in the opinion of CAT, civilian users should be looking for the suppressor that rates with the highest point tally over 50 design attributes. In the real world, a civilian user should look for that one grab-and-go system and not be overly focused on purchasing a suppressor based on one or two design points, unless there is a specific application need.